Hello, welcome to Double Talk. I'm Mark Steffen. I'm Michael Mandel, and we're starting our, our run up to Negroni Week. Negroni Week is the first full week of June. That's right. And we're starting to get the word out so that you can go and badger restaurants who have not signed up with them by magazine to support it. But if they you mean have, bars? Bar, there's no specific bars in town, is there? Well, most restaurants don't uh, have bars. Well, they do. Some do. They do. I most mean, don't. Well, do they? Yeah, they do. Most don't. You mean like uh, most like, restaurants uh, don't? You mean like IHOP and and those? They and go to the bar Denny's, IHOP. See how far Denny's, you can get. I mean, you go to a steak restaurant. You go to any restaurant that uh, gives you a good dinner, uh, and you're going to have wine and beer at least. Well, you know, when I lived in Hollywood, California, there were Did two. They have restaurants there. There were two Denny's in my neighborhood. They both had bars. Yeah, but all of California has bars, That's true. no matter what. I mean, all of Las Cruces and uh, New Mexico doesn't. It's really an anomaly. And we're going to talk about a new bar uh, coming up here. But but first, we're going to do the Negroni thing. Whereas Negroni, we, we can't wait till June, so we're going to do it now. Well, I want to start out with what I consider a basic uh, uh, way to make it. And a lot of people think that uh, it's gin, uh, Campari, and vermouth. sweet vermouth. That's three so, ingredients. That's all it takes. Three ingredients and plenty of ice. Uh, a lot of people, as you see, drink it in an old-fashioned glass with ice cubes. If you're in Italy and you're sitting on the piazza, yeah. the sun is beating down on you and your, your drink is getting uh, hot. So it's good to have the cubes there because it but keeps it cold. Aren't you sitting under a Cinzano umbrella? It's still bouncing. The sun's no. bouncing off and all those hot Italian ladies make it hot. Oh, it's so you got to watch out. So, But you're drinking it in a... Sweet bar that's uh, air conditioned. You like can have a dainty a martini little glass. martini glass. Um, so the obvious necessary ingredient to make this classic Negroni, and over these next weeks we're going to do the variations. But Campari is is the one that starts it, and uh, that's uh, from Milan, and it started with uh, the famous uh, Torino Milano drink, which was a vermouth. And Campari, and people used to drink that in Italy because it's a sweet and a bitter. And Mar Milano, Milan is the like the fashion center of the world, basically. Well, that's true, and it's a big city in northern Italy, and uh, uh, that soon turned into the Americano because when Americans moved into Italy when they were expats living there after the war, they wanted soda water in it, mm. and so they put soda water in it. Soda water mixed with Campari. Mix, mix with these so two, with, so with the vermouth and, and the Campari, and it could linger. It's a really, you could sit all day in, in Italy. Absolutely. That's why we're going to retire there. Right, you don't get uh, drunk, you just yes. sit there and uh, watch the world go by. And the Negroni, I'll probably say this a million times, was started by Count Negroni, came into his restaurant actually in Florence in uh, around 1920, and he said, oh, I've had such a bad day. I need something stronger than the Americano. So the bartender says, well, forget the soda water and throws in gin. It didn't necessarily say what kind of gin. A lot of people think they, they go over to either Tanqueray or Bombay. But uh, I believe that Beefeater. London Dry Gin. Yes, has more juniper. And you want the juniper mm. notes to mix with it because uh, I'll tell you why. This is all herbal. This is more herbal than uh, Tanqueray and uh, Is there Bombay. such a thing as an Italian gin? Oh yes, there actually really? is. What's uh, it called? There's a number of them. The one they have at uh, Sunset Grill is... Do they have one? Yes, they do. It's, it's a Malfi, it's called Malfi gin and it's lemon flavored. Hmm. And I think that's the only one I know about. There's no straight gin, it's gotta be flavored. But gins, you know, started, well, Actually, probably they started in the Netherlands uh, with uh, Junipero. So I'm just putting equal amounts of Campari, uh, gin, and uh, the vermouth in. Yes, it's three parts each. It's and, the easiest uh, drink there is to make, really. Except a fake martini. The driest of dry martini, all you do is mix in either, vermouth, or either gin or vodka. or vodka, and you don't put any vermouth in it. Or as you say, there's enough... I've vermouth already, in New Mexico because they put a vermouth bottle. When they, when they set out the atomic bomb in, outside of Alamogordo. So all the vermouth... They, they set up uh, a bottle of vermouth there. So when the bomb went off, the vermouth was vaporized into the atmosphere. So all you have to do is hold up your glass in the air and you get enough vermouth for a very dry martini. And that that's is the story. And that's that. that. So there's, uh, this is filled with ice. That's 
that's how you do it. You make it uh, so that it gets really cold and suggested shaking time, 20 seconds. 20 whole seconds. You know, you see, yeah, so uh, put on a 20 second commercial and do that. Now, can you hear it? I'm putting it near the microphone. Yeah, no, but I can Keep talking. Are you counting? Count Negroni, that's his job. Count he, Negroni, count. that's how you count. So you want to smash up. You know, this is shake, not stirred, because yes. uh, uh, sometimes you, you have to just break up the uh, juniper in the beef heater, although it's not really there. You don't see okay. anything floating. This is your favorite part of the drink, I think. It is. I love shaking these uh, drinks, and you, I love watching them, too, when people do it well. Some people go oh. like this. Oh, no, you really got to get into it. You go there. Like Moroccan. And you move your, you move your Absolutely. arms. Absolutely. So, oh, so this is uh, for Katie Milligan. Use beef eater. Don't use those uh, wimpy other ones. Well, this is a British gin. They're, most gins are British. That's this is a French uh, vermouth, Dubonnet. But you can use an, and this is an, an Italian aperitif. Yes. Did you want one? Oh, could I? Oh, sure. Just happened to have it right here. I knew I could count. And on you. you could put a. I didn't bring any orange or lemon because, you know, we don't have that kind of... But you uh, can put a twist in there if you, if you it like. It helps. It adds a little citrus and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a sweet drink, so you wouldn't want to put an all over an onion in there. That's sweet bit. No. No. Well, that's for martinis. That's martinis and, and Gibsons. Gibsons. Gibsons, thank you. Well, Cheers. It looks lovely. Here's to Negroni month. <laughs> yes, there's no getting around the sweetness of a Negroni as well as a little bitterness of the Campari. That's true. It balances. Mm. So Negroni month is coming up in a couple of weeks. Week. A couple of weeks. Week, it's coming up in a- We're midweek, mid, mid month now. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's Campari week. We're in Campari month. I just made this into- Negroni month. month. Negroni month. Negroni month is June, my birth month. Really? I'm a Negroni boy, I guess. How'd you get to be a Scorpio? I'm not. God. Deceive me. I'm a crab. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll buy that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the spider of the deep. Spider of the deep. Well, this is good. We're not going to do the show anymore because we're just going to drink this, okay? Did you have any topics that you wanted to talk about? <laughs> Anybody who's watched this show knows, knows that we're into food and drink. We always start off the show with a drink. That's where, we're, always. That's where always. we are when we try to. Yeah, we try. Nine times out of ten, we do. Okay. And we're also going to be talking about food right up off the bat. And that is to say, we're sorry that one of our local restaurants, which is really taking off recently, yes. a bite of Belgium, had a big fire in the kitchen. They're going to be closed for a while. Their ascendancy was that they had a small little place that pretty much did uh, lunches and they, they, of course, did waffles. They're known for their waffles. Belgian waffles and breakfasts. And they would do these uh, uh, great French toasts with scones or other things. Yeah, and then they branch out for dinner now. Yeah, they do. Do a big dinner and... Because uh, they got a lick, they got a wine and beer license yeah, recently. Yeah. So you got to have that for dinner. In fact, ironically enough, we wanted to go last mm, night. Of course. And uh, we had and, planned it last week. And so something happened. Maybe the dinner crew left the stove on or... Who's to say? Who it could knows? be an electrical fire. It could be a... We'll find out. Uh, so they're going to be closed for a while, unfortunately. And then we'll try them again for dinner. And uh, but there's other restaurant news, which is good news. Yes. For a little place on Solano called El Patron. And they won. They an won award. best green chili. Red chili. Did you say red? Green. Green. Green chili. That's red right there. That is red. Yeah. But the other one's green next door to it. I think. Next door. I see the jalapenos there. And and, yes, and they, they recall, won the Green Chili what, Award. While we were still doing this show in the early parts of this, which could have been six years ago, El Patron had also won Best uh, barbe Barbecue good Beef. So they've got a chef there who knows what he's doing. I mean, it is They're, a really small place. You'd go buy it and you'd think, uh, I wonder if I could get I don't my... Think, I don't think they can seat 20 people. That's about what it could seat. Maybe, maybe. Uh, and they have a drive-up window, though, which is cool. They do. Uh, they used to do, oh, brisket burritos, because their brisket was great. Uh, and they were famous for that, what, six years ago. And for an entire year or two, you had to get there before noon if you wanted any brisket. Oh, because they were just ran they're, out. They were just so great. But they're open late? Are they still open late the way El Menudo used to be in the same place? Yeah, we used to be in the same place. It used I don't to be open until so. four on the weekends. Yeah, well, for good reason. 
to you know absorb, no absorb your Negronis <laughs> because you know it's a Mexican tradition to go out and drink Negronis. Well, congratulations to El Patron. Yes, I'm going to have to go there again. <laughs> have lunch. You can I, have. I've been there. In Wait, a while. when they say they have the best red chili, don't they mean with with pork? I don't and know. And you don't eat pork. Oh no, no, it's not just red. It's green, yeah. and they put it on everything: enchiladas. Everything. Oh, what well, you'll see. Anyhow, I can't wait to taste it. Call up. Maybe we got to take it out and bring it in here while we're waiting. We'll do that. And while we're waiting... Little Toad Creek is another place. Yes. So, speaking of food and drink, Little, Toad's, uh, Little Toad Creek Brewery and Distillery. On uh, Main Street. They're kicking up into uh, their openness this, this, this coming, coming week. week. And so that's right downtown. Our producer went Main to Street. check it out. He said it's been packed. And not only notice brewery and distillery, most places like uh, Spotted Dog and El Bosque and uh, High Desert are just breweries. So uh, this town does like beer, apparently. Now we actually have somebody who's actually bringing in They make their alcohol. own. Alcohol. They make their whiskey, their rum, mm -hmm. their tequila. So you can get it there. Uh, with the unfortunately, I think with the laws in New Mexico, since you have to only sell the stuff you distill, they won't have... Compare because it's got alcohol in it. It's got alcohol and they don't make it. And it has like 20, 15 or 20 percent. Unless they have a beer and wine license, then that would allow them to have these. No, kinds it's 24 percent alcohol. So I think the wine license only goes up to about 16 percent. Ooh. Yeah. Wine, but Campari is uh, fortified, fortified wine. wine. Yes, indeed. Fortified with alcohol. And vitamin C. So downtown is starting to pick up a little bit with, with things like a little toad. Creek Brewery and Distillery. Right That's next to Dragonfly, thing. which has a beer and wine license. They do have a beer and wine license. They, and have, they have good food. food. Yeah, well, Little Toad. They, little Toad has, has a, They have a food truck that parks that out back. Have? Really? Yes. So that's sort of like Spotted Dog started. Exactly. Well, well that's how high, high Desert Brewery started. They didn't really? have a kitchen either. You could go across the street to Little uh, Nellie's, to Nellie's yeah. bring over Nellie's to go. And the Nellie's is still better food than, <laughs> than, than they, they have now there at High Desert. Ooh, well. Yes. Sorry about that. Well, food doesn't make a lot of money. Booze does. Booze, high, high percentage. Yes. Uh, you get profits. A, yes. So actually, this past, last weekend, speaking of high profits, we went down to uh, Billy Cruz. Yes, for and, Mother's Day? Yes, for Mother's Day, because they're yes. advertising it. They were finally back, they're finally emailing stuff. And Thursday, we went to the wine dinner. It was really good. At Billy Cruz? Yes, this Thursday, uh -huh. today. And uh, so we'll see. But their wine list has the Belle Gloss wine, which is made by Wagner. It's a Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. uh, there's three different types. They're all great. They're all 40 bucks. In the, in the restaurant, Belle Gloss wine, if you go to like k &L or uh, Bounty Hunter online to buy it, 60 bucks retail. And uh, uh, Billy Cruz is selling for 40 bucks in the restaurant. It's the best deal around. How about in their liquor store next door? Did in they... the liquor store, it's only 29 bucks, and that's an incredible deal. Well, there. Bell Gloss was just uh, awesome. It's, it's sort of the most wowish stuff I've had since Camus hmm. threw me on. Is it time for a break already? Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll take a break. We're going to make another Negroni. Do the Bell Gloss at uh, Billy Cruz. And we'll be right back after these words. Cheers. No, it's not bad. New Age Maids, a professional home cleaning service. Your satisfaction is our priority. Let us do the work so you can relax. Call us at 655-0009. Call Mark Goldstein, the safe money guy, at 575-556-2472 to learn about innovative strategies now available to help you grow, protect, and preserve your money and financial future, regardless of market conditions. Granite is here. We'll 
come to you to customize your kitchen and bathroom with beautiful countertops and cabinets. Find out more at HorizonGranite.com. Call us at 575-650-3180. Come to Tacos El Borrego de Oro in Las Cruces. We are celebrating $1 Taco Tuesdays. Come enjoy authentic Mexican food for the whole family. Bring the family to Tacos El Borrego for $1 Taco Tuesday and Flauta Thursdays. Now is the best time to make your property beautiful again. Since 1967, Gonzales Landscaping has offered beautiful professional landscaping services to all of southern New Mexico. We offer residential and commercial landscaping design, full lawn, tree and shrub care, with annuals and perennials, tree and palm trimming, spring and fall cleanups, mulching and more. Let us do the work at prices you can afford. We service all of Las Cruces. Visit us online at gonzalesnursery.com or call us for a free estimate. 575-382-7272 We are back. This is Double Talk. I'm Mark. I'm Michael Mandel. And Mark wants to tell a little about uh, his Negroni uh, in the intermission. He said uh, he really was liking it. You said that. Your first taste, you go... I admitted it. Okay. I'm like, what's not to like? I want to be honest. What's not to like? I've always liked your Negronis, Michael. (laughs) This one's no different. Okay. Wait till next week. Weird things are coming. Weird yes. things are coming. In the coming in the coming Negroni weeks. What's going to happen then? Michael will be doing variations on the standard Negroni, right? Yes. Now you, it takes it away from what it is, but it still gets back now, to we, the basic obviously concept. We'll be using the beef eater because it's almost gone. So what will be? Uh, what, what do you think we'll be having then? It depends on what I got left over. <laughs> <laughs> what I, other gins? I, I you actually have? have a German gin called Ruta. And that's a pretty good thing. And the other one that's sort of like beef eater is counter gin. And that's... Uh, counter? Good. We should go with the count uh, yeah, Negroni. The count Negroni. Yeah. Yes, the indeed. Counter. No, there, don't worry. And also, you can change gins and it makes it uh, crazy. You know what I did? There was the gin we used last week. Yes, that was a crazy one. That was the greenhouse gin. And... Uh, that was sort of a Negroni variation, I think. <laughs> well, it was. Now, yeah. coming up here with well, the convention center, Las Cruces Convention Center, which is owned by the city, but it's on university land. So they, they broke ground for the new addition. But I heard they're going to fix it. <laughs> they broke ground. Yes. They'll, they'll soon repair it. Yes. They're adding on a new uh, what, exhibition 6, 000, hall. What, 6,000 square feet? It's going to be gigantic. Well, here's because what Because we doing. don't use it enough. Well, what they're doing... I'd like to hear this. They're going to configure it in such a way that it can also be used as a motion picture sound stage. Once the Pepsi thing... Uh, Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola. No, it... it, it um, well, I'm assuming they're going to do that. Both. Do both of them, right? They said they were going to do that, but now that we have the sound stage, I still hope they do it. Why not? As long as they're building it, it won't cost much more money to reconfigure it. Yeah, but then you have to figure out when is somebody going to have a gigantic convention there and you just, if you're shooting a movie, because that happens so often in town. Right. right. What movie are we shooting now? What movies do we know? Well, the one that was going to be here this month canceled, unfortunately. I know because I auditioned for it. <laughs> That's probably why they canceled. And it got canceled. It's, it's, I don't God, know what happened to it. God. But there's there should be one coming up in August. Still, it's going to be a low-budget film. Yeah. But... They're going to recon. They're going when they build reconfigure. When they add on the new uh, convention hall, they're going to hopefully soundproof it so it can be used and put in the correct electrical to be used as a soundstage if need be. So it'll be a multi-purpose room, and that'll be something more for the new chancellor and president. You know, we did a. a uh, a search for a new chancellor. Yes, in the region. Now, all we want you to do is get a chancellor. What's the difference between a president and I a chancellor? I have no idea. I think somebody deals with money and the other deals with people with money. Used to be 
All we had was a president. Gary Crothers was chancellor and president. We paid him one salary. Mm. So we're going to pay with that one salary now to two people. I see. Each one gets the probably similar. So we're paying dollars twice as much. Which means... Uh, so well, they better start so, pulling in So stuff. do you think they're going to pull money away from the athletic department for that? No, probably the no. English department and the theater department. Yeah, so it'll yes. be pulled away from the uh, we're making, academic department. Yes. We already have money to go into a new arts building which is, they're working on now. We discussed that last Yeah, the, week. No, the new art building is under construction right now. So are they going to take the old building and tear it down? Or what, what are they going to do with the old one, do you know? Uh, it I used think, to be I think they'll, make it, they'll make it into the uh, chancellor's office. <laughs> put the it was, you know, that was amazing because you'd be in, if you were in an art class on the second floor, you'd have these bleachers, which is a leftover from the gym because they never took those bleachers out right. so people could sit there. That's the old Williams gym. From uh, when you were a kid, and well, when I was in college, though they had that there because it was right next to the to the football field, which is which no is longer a, there. Yeah, it's a parking lot, I bet. Or, yeah, right. And oh no, no, it's uh, it's a parking lot between that building and the English building. It's a parking lot in the speech building yeah. and the English building. Yeah. Uh, so uh, our, our new chancellors, uh, actually, the people I've talked to are pleased with the choices, so that's good. Our uh, visa. Maybe, maybe and they Flores. actually selected the right people. Well, Hopefully congratulations that works. to those two. I guess you're betting on them. Well. Are you betting on them? You want to bet? Uh, no, but I know you do. I do? Who, what do you mean? Because you used to go down to Juarez with uh, my daughter's piano teacher That's and true. Uh, bet. Well, you know, I used to go, there was a betting parlor down in Juarez, just two blocks in. And I went down there a couple of times with the fellow that we both know to place bets. Yeah. And he would, he would take bets for 10 to 10 people down there. And he would place bets on sporting events. Because and then you'd go to the Kentucky, you couldn't you couldn't Kentucky do it bar. here because it was illegal, but it's legal in Mexico. So that's how Mexico made so much money off us Americans. And sure, because yeah. once you're down there, yeah, you, you got go somewhere have, else. You spend some money drink, here and there. You have to have some sure. tacos. Maybe you have lunch. Make a fortune. You buy some trinkets, whatever. Now the Supreme Court has said that that uh, betting is not them. legal. Sports betting Sports is not betting. legal nationwide. Yes, but that doesn't include uh, roulette and uh, what all That's those already things. legal in Nevada. But sports well, betting, you can do places. on now, you can do online, you can go to a bookie, you can go to a casino and, and bet on sports. But a lot of people just like to do their one arm bandit, right? All those ladies putting quarters in their In the slot machines. machines. Yeah. That, well, that's, that's, like that. that's, that's a whole different thing. That's different sports betting. Now, do you think it's a good thing? What? That, yeah, sports that, betting now legal. It was Probably people were still betting even when it was illegal. One hundred fifty billion dollars were bet illegally. So on if, if we get taxes off of money, you know, Delaware, I think, was the people who were talking about it. How they will now have sports betting, and they say, well, it's going to be really good for everybody, except for New Jersey, because people from Delaware used to go to New Jersey to bet, and uh, you know, from all other places. If all states have <laughs> betting then you won't have to go to a neighboring uh, state. That's right. That money stays in state. It can only help, I think, the states. I remember when, uh, when the Indian casinos were first started about 20 years ago. The, oh, the Native American When the Native ones? American yeah, yes. uh, casinos were st first coming up. Well, 20 years ago, they were called Indians. Vegas yeah. thought. They'd lose it all. Vegas and Atlantic City thought, oh, this is going to be the death of us. Everybody's going to go to the Indian casinos. Not true. I think what it People happens went is to the Indian casinos and they thought, Wow. This is great. Now, let's go to Vegas. And Vegas is still great. So I don't even bet. It actually helped Vegas. I don't even bet, and I think Vegas is great because it's great. Everything's great there. Anyway, speaking of betting, uh, Preakness. Betting, the Preakness is this weekend. It's today. The second of the what? Triple. Of the Triple Crown. Crown. It's the second race of the Triple Crown. We have the Kentucky Derby. This weekend, we're having the Preakness, and in two weeks, we'll have the Belmont Stakes. And, and you could go down to Sunland Park the racetrack there. Go down there and bet. And watch it and bet there. Yes. And uh, our friends from here, some uh, our friends who love gin, so Rosa and Bob, hi, uh, they love gin. That's fine. And who doesn't? Uh, they're going there to uh, probably. Right, now New Mexico won't get the sports betting off the ground because it's New Mexico for who knows how many years it'll take them to do it. We still have uh, uh, Native American betting places that sort of haven't like cranked up their uh, authority to do betting. They're still trying to work on that. That's but true. I think the uh, sports betting is a lot easier. Uh, you just need the right electronics. And a lot of people will still be doing it illegally, and that's where the real money is. Yes. 
Now, uh, the friends of the Oregon Mountain Desert Peaks they're are having a cleanup this weekend. Today. May 21st. Yes. And it goes from uh, 9 to 12. 9 to 12. Now, if you'd like to volunteer, it's, it's halfway over. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Well, more than halfway. But if you're watching yeah, this watching online 11. ahead of time. Yes, I'll put it on uh, early so you can go there. Yes, they're going to be, going to be cleaning up areas in, in those regions. And you can, if you want more information, you can call 523 1423. And you know, all that junk that's in front of your house because the wind blows it into your house and then you move it aside and then it gets blown further, all that stuff ends up in those mountains because sure. that's where the wind is blowing. Well, so they've, they, work on they that. have uh, spotted a, an illegal dumping ground that they're going to be cleaning up on the west, on the east mesa. So they they need people to go out there and help them clean that up. Because people just go out there and dump stuff. I don't want to be derogatory, but the East Mesa is a dumping ground. Yes, but in the uh, park area. Oh, there. Okay. Anyway, this weekend is a big blues weekend. Last night they did Blues Brothers at the Rio Grande Theater. Tonight. Tonight. Outdoor concerts. They're doing uh, uh, Tracy Nelson. Those of you who are my age probably remember Mother Earth and Tracy Nelson. Now this is you're my age. This isn't the Tracy Nelson who was the daughter of Ricky Nelson. No, because I, I worked with Tracy Nelson on a TV a different, pilot thirty yeah. years ago. Right. Well, uh, I'm sure you worked on a pilot. Um, oh, I did. You mean just to get free airfare? No, I was hired to work on this pilot with Tracy Nelson. It's called Square Pegs. It was a TV series. I remember that. Ruben uh, V is anyway. also one of the performers. And uh, live music tonight on the plot. It's twenty dollars yes. to get in, though. If you buy it online, it's fifteen bucks. Or if you buy it ahead of time, ahead of time. which would be right now. Uh, Uterpe is a flamenco a group. That's and, going on uh, today too. It's seven thirty. Uh, they have performed over at the convention center when we did the Las Cruces Arts Festival. Oh, yes, indeed. And uh, their uh, flamenco is way different than blues, but it's still musical. It's so check that out. That's twenty dollars at. Uh, the at, Arts the, at the Arts Council over there in Mesilla. And the good thing, we went to see uh, Hard Road Trio last week. Yes. It's such a great small place that to see Flamenco close up is going to be great. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And we also want to give out, uh, well, there's Margot Kidder. She passed away this week. Yeah, and probably what is that. She was Chris, an actress. She played Lois Lane in the Superman like Christopher movies. Christopher Reeves. He yeah. died a while ago. Yeah. But and the, and she's pretty, she's pretty young. Yeah. She's pretty. And young. And young. Then. To die, you think? To die. In the 60s, I would think. Oh, uh, you know, people could die all over the place. So, um, Wait, didn't that, that's what somebody said in uh, Trump's uh, White House. What's that? Uh, well, he's going to die anyway. Yes, yeah, true. Yes, that was a... Yeah, John McCain's going to die anyway, so why, yeah, yeah. who and, cares and, about and, him? Margot Kidder died. Well, we're going to die anyway. Who cares about us? Well, we better drink more then. Well, <laughs> I mean, well this show's it, about to die, so thanks for watching. See you next week, <laughs> if, if we're still allowed on. It'll be Negroni week next week, too. Yes. Variations.